I don't want any more economists, sages, or oracles bombinating over our cables. I want a reporter, somebody who doesn't know the difference between a nism and a kangaroo. What a curious idea that the person best suited to deal with a crisis is someone who knows very little about it and cares even less. And yet that seems to be the premise of Alfred Hitchcock's Foreign Correspondent, a diverting caper set right before the outbreak of World War II and released in the early days of the Battle of Britain. Were you really going to tip that man five pounds? Why, of course. I charge all my traveling expenses to the office, corrupting an official, five pounds. You're just a wee bit unscrupulous, aren't you? No, unscrupulous. Just in love. Joel McRae plays Johnny Jones, or Huntley Haverstock, depending on who you ask, an American beat reporter sent over to Europe on the brink of war to figure out just what's going on. Jones arrives in London and meets a curious array of characters. First off, a fellow journalist, a rather dissolute fellow, played by Robert Benchley. Yeah, I'm on the wagon. I went to the doctor today to see about these jitters I got, and he said it was the wagons for a month or a whole new set of organs. There's Herbert Marshall playing a mysterious continental peacenik. Better to tell me woman, my daughter. Lorraine Day as Fisher's daughter, Carol, else. also a passionate peacenik and Haverstock's love interest. And the incomparable George Saunders as Stephen Folliot. That's with two Fs. He seems to be a very fine fellow. One of my ancestors had his head chopped off by Henry VIII, and his wife dropped the capital a letter to commemorate the occasion. There it is. Now you say it like a stutter. I know, just straight for. Foreign Correspondent is the second film that Hitchcock made for an American studio, and it has many of the master's signature flourishes. There are breakneck action sequences, abundant red herrings, improbable moments of high comedy, a vanished man, and sequences of visual invention that border on the surreal. McRae also plays a fairly familiar kind of Hitchcock hero. He's the wrong man, caught up in intrigue that he doesn't quite understand. And Haverstock, or Jones, also has a lot in common with other Hollywood heroes of the same era. Think of Bogart in Casablanca, for example. He's a detached American who overcomes his isolation and gets involved in the struggle to save the world. I thought you were a newspaper man, Haverstock. Well, that doesn't include kidnapping your fiance where I come from. Oh, it would if your country were at stake. Well, this isn't my country. Well, it's your story, and don't be so gloomy about it. As a matter of fact, she doesn't even have to know what you're doing. Just keep her amused for a few hours. Well, There's something well, irreverent well, about his attitude through the whole thing, and Foliot's as well. For a couple of guys caught up in a global catastrophe, they seem to be having a pretty good time. And the movie is also a lot of fun, but it's never frivolous or simply escapist. The character's irreverence, their good cheer, our ability to laugh along with them in the midst of danger, this is one of our greatest weapons in the fight against humorless and brutalizing dictatorship.